All right, one of the questions I had was how to get the, uh, get this chrome or stainless trim off without damaging it and uh, look at different ways. And I think the two by four method is probably the best. Get it on that edge with an angle. Work it, work it off a little bit at a time. Just like that. And as you go, that'll be a little bit brutal. Not too much. Just uh, be patient and work it. have a seam right here so we're going to work it just past the seam like that and we're just going to wiggle it out of the dirt and there she came off none for the wear none for the worse for the wear. say that correctly again we used a piece of two by four that seemed to be the correct length looks like it's about eight inches long trim down we used a, uh, a Ewing or East, East Wing leather handled hammer. This is brand new, but it's like probably 20 years old. And there we go. And the reason we're removing that is because uh, back in here, all the, see it's all yucky. I don't know if we're gonna put it back on. Um, yeah, we gotta get a little caulking out of there. Get a wire brush in there, get the caulking out, get it recalked. Um, a little bit of, uh, if, we, if we leave it out, then we're gonna have to uh, add a little filler piece inside of this. So obviously when they put chrome in, they don't match it up very well. Interesting fact. So the whole thing's like that. And this, this uh, stainless trim is really nice shape. It does have some, they taped it, they put, masking tape on it i think to keep it from getting scratched while they were you know sanding the top and never doing anything with it i, I did spray some black on it uh rust transformer we'll see how it works it's gonna get all sanded on anyway but uh, we're, we're gonna save that trim got one off the other side i haven't i haven't worked on this one up here yet so we might this windshield's gonna come out so i might have to get inside here and tap it up with after the windshield's out so that might be uh, that might be something that requires the windshield to come out of if you're trying to take that out of a truck. But then again, you know with these older trucks, you know the gasket's not in very good shape anyway. So if you're if you're going to restore something and you're going to drive it and you're going to be in the rain, again in the Pacific Northwest we have a lot of rain here, so that's definitely something we're going to be doing on this one. So we'll take that off. We'll see how it looks. Um, there's another seam in the middle here. So this is a four piece. So yeah, hopefully I'm gonna take it off and it's gonna be in nice shape. So somebody could polish that up and, and really use it. But if I don't put it back on, I'm gonna have some, uh, obviously some repair to do here. So again, see how this caulking's all dried up. This one I kind of scratched at anyway again, but we're gonna have to recalk all this. We'll do the whole cab. We got some uh, floor repair done in this one. Uh, I still have to get this piece out here replaced and uh, got this floor panel all replaced. And last night we uh, come on the back side here. Last night we got this piece replaced and I just re I got it all caulked and everything. So we'll have to get the floor cleaned and get the, again, I got to get this caulking out. So that'll be uh, time consuming. Wire brush, I kind of wired brushed on this up this here as well already. So we'll go back. Some of it doesn't, it just doesn't want to come out. You know, you really have to pick at it and stuff. But if we can get some new caulking, get the heavy flaky stuff off, get some recalking in there. Um, this up here, I've done that before on the C10s is get a wire, get a, get a screwdriver or something in there and just get that heavy stuff back out. The C10s have, uh, like that over there have a, a ridge all the way around the entire top. It's a, it doesn't sweep down. 67 it started to sweep like this and i guess that's the that's the era of this one too i think the old fords um you know early 60s had a full crown on the whole top of it so yeah just the difference the way they build stuff so there it is how to remove your uh, stainless without damaging it there's this one's got a big gap over here 
So they must really be lazy if they're going to put stainless trim on it. But you can see how it kind of discolors because it holds water underneath it. So I guess it's not really, I don't see any rot in it. I see some of the trucks rot back up in here. I, I haven't ran across it yet, but uh, evidently it's pretty prevalent in the Northwest here. I uh, Fortunately, I've had vehicles that were in high desert, whether it's on Eastern Washington, where I grew up, or uh, later in life when I was in Arizona. So again, this is a nice, uh, nice truck. JT picked up a nice uh, 52 Dodge with uh, no drivetrain in it, but he was sending some pictures last night, and wow. Uh, it came, it was in Eastern Washington, but he said he found something in it that indicated it came from Arizona, but uh, he had no rust in that guy at all. So very, very nice find. Just don't find them. Like I say, this was a rust-free truck, which I guess I'll have to say is there's no such thing as a rust-free truck because, hey, guess what? There was rust, you know, both corners. Uh, the cab corners are good, but uh, that's just, you know, you get in here with your wet feet and it holds a little water down there. There's no natural drain for that area that I could see at all. So uh, I just got to reform this piece here, which would be a little more challenging to get that guy reformed. But nonetheless, we can get it done. I don't have a donor to cut it out of. I had a donor to probably all rot it out there too anyway. So I don't know if you can buy those pieces or not. That's not part of the, uh, it's not part of the rocker here. In fact, the rockers, I've replaced rockers on the C10s, a lot of them, but these look like the rockers go underneath there. Underneath that piece there. Anyway, there you go. Got those off and saved them.